whatever you put into a boat, a camper, or an RV, you need to be able to set that amount of money in the middle of the floor and set fire to it and it'd be okay. Because <laughs> that's basically what you're doing. Alright everybody, so quick little backstory. We've been having problems with our back AC for probably about a month, month and a half. And uh, it all started when it was making a weird uh, grinding noise. And um, the fan blower would not spin anymore. So I did a full clean out on the inside. I was able to manually um, move the fan blower and it would then kick on. So pretty much I think the uh, fan motor is dead. The other issue is when I went up there a couple of times to look at it, this shaft here that does the condenser fan is completely rusted. I was spraying silicon uh, lube inside here. That seemed to be working for a while, but then the grinding noise came back and also it eventually just uh, stopped working. So when we turn it on, basically all you hear is like Nee. So we're gonna replace the fan motor and it also came with a new capacitor. So we're gonna swap that out as well. That should alleviate the issue. So let's go on top of the roof of the RV and uh, figure this out. All right, here we go. All right, everybody. So if I didn't mention already, uh, we have Coleman Mach AC units. This is an 8,000 series. It's 15 years old. Might even be pushing 16 at this point. So four screws on the top that hold the shroud in place. We'll take those off. All right, and if you don't know, the front of the shroud has a little lip. So you gotta kind of lift the shroud over that lip to get it off and then slide both sides up at the same time. So here's our old fan motor right here. You can see all the rust. Here's the shaft that was rusted over and this was me scraping it off and trying to keep it lubed up, but it wasn't working. So this blade we're gonna keep and put onto the new shaft, obviously. We gotta take this off to release fan motor. Here are the wires, uh, red, black, white, brown and black, and then brown. Um, so I'm actually going to splice from here because I've already got connections from our easy start. So you can see here, I'm just going to splice using uh, buck connectors. So we just got to get this all disconnected. Other big thing that I already did is I turned off the breaker and I disconnected my thermostat. Uh, so there's no power going to this anymore. All right, the other thing we're gonna do, we're gonna open up the side panel where the capacitors are, and we're just gonna um, put a screwdriver across the top of the capacitors, discharge any extra electrical current that might be in there. Always use an insulated screwdriver for that. So. You can see there's all the wires from the easy start. There's the capacitors. We just gotta make sure we figure out which capacitor to switch out. All right, there it is. So we're gonna be switching out this capacitor that's right here. It's got a brown wire going to the top and a white wire. Yeah, and that's all secured in there by this metal strap. There's two retaining screws here on the bottom. We got 
got a nut here and then we got screws here. Um, yeah. Insert fan blade. I'm just gonna mark on the the shaft so I can measure it uh, once it's off. The thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna release this. right here is just rusted so moving this thing is kind of difficult it appears to be moving somewhat uh, the problem is you gotta get this blade off before you can pull this out. One hour later. with dust. Holy cow. It's pretty disgusting in here. This is like the one spot you can't clean. So now we have to uh, detach the blower and then uh, unscrew the motor from this backing plate. One hour later. see but look at all that dust and crap so I'm gonna go blow this out it's still in pretty good shape I have one broken uh, I guess tooth or fan blade so that's all right but it's still usable these go for like 70 bucks OEM so we're gonna save that so there's four attachment points I'm just gonna rip through this and then I'll tape over it with AC tape because I don't have an extra backing. And I'm gonna clean inside here because this is disgusting. This is like a spot you can't get to because of how the blowing wheel is in there.
All right, so I took the front cover off and I found all a bunch of dirt down in there. So I sprayed um, our evap foam no rinse. It's breaking up all that dirt and then that'll just go out through the drip tray, um, which is also clogged. So I got to clean that out too. So I just sprayed the coils and uh, it's breaking down some of a lot of the grime and uh, just gonna do that for a little bit before I start putting everything back together um, but here is the blowing wheel completely clean I used that uh, cleaner on it then I uh, washed it off with the hose and it's basically brand new so uh, this has never been cleaned so yeah it needed to be done <laughs> oh boy all right. So this says it's a no rinse, but with a lot of grime, it says to rinse off with water and you might need multiple applications. So I'm gonna do it two or three times and then rinse it with water and I think we'll be good after that. So I got the drip tray out. It's disgusting. I'm gonna clean that off. And then, uh, yeah, put it all back together. One hour later. I'm just gonna leave this open until I get that fan uh, blower blade back. But, uh, 
AC blower back in. With the uh, with the new motor comes a new capacitor, so I'm gonna switch that out. That's this guy. Looks like crap. So just gotta match it up. So now I'm just going to hook the wires back up. Now, some people will probably say that yeah, I could just run the wire through the the uh, 
opening here and reattach here but since I have an easy start already installed and wires already crimped and um, spliced on the inside of here I just thought it would be easier just to connect them out here rather than run the line in and then have to reconnect do all my uh, easy start splices again so either way I was making new connections put this thing back together Alright everybody, so everything's cleaned up, crimped in spots, and we're gonna turn on the AC in the bedroom, and it should kick on. Yeah, I'll let you see the motor. It's spinning. up here actually I just have to uh, heat shrink my butt connectors and then we're gonna put the shroud back on uh, yeah all right I'll meet you down at the table for a little recap all right everybody thanks so much for watching this video uh, if you have any questions about replacing the AC fan motor on a Coleman Mac leave a comment down below uh, it wasn't that difficult the only issues that delayed the whole replacement is that our AC unit was extremely dirty so I decided to do a full maintenance and clean uh, normally I clean from the inside of the RV but when you take everything apart and then you try to get into where the AC fan wheel is you can't clean the foam that's in there that well so uh, from now on I'm gonna actually I guess every six months or to a year pull out the full fan motor so you can clean that foam inside other than that install is pretty straightforward just make sure um, when you're going to order your part you get the correct model number of your AC unit which you can find on the side of the cover after you take the shroud off so I'll show you a picture of where ours was uh, in total I think I had to order this part from a local RV place on our way to Yosemite and it was around 300 I think $320, $330 plus tax. I think it came to around $360 or $370. Uh, the pain in the butt thing was is that once we were in Yosemite, I had to drive back to the town of Merced to pick it up because it came like a day and a half later. Uh, but yeah, we're super happy now. The AC unit is working great. 
Uh, the only thing that you will have to do differently is obviously when you wire it up, you can either run the new wires through and just reconnect them to the different capacitors if you don't have an easy start installed or just um, splice them in like I did. So yeah, all right, thanks for watching everybody. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and follow along on our awesome RV journey. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.